In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Today we remember Gerald and Catherine Moon and celebrate this last day before Christmas Eve as we look forward this evening to the welcoming of Christ upon his birth. So let us prepare our hearts and minds asking for the Lord's mercy and his forgiveness. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Come quickly, we pray, Lord Jesus, and do not delay, that those who trust in your compassion may find solace and relief in your coming, who live and reign with you and the and with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Samuel. When King David was settled in his palace, and the Lord had given him rest from his enemies on every side, he said to Nathan the prophet, Here I am, living in a house of cedar, while the ark of God dwells in a tent. Nathan answered the king, Go, do whatever you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that night the Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, should you build me a house to dwell in? It was I who took you from the pasture and from the care of the flock to be commander of my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you went, and I have destroyed all your enemies before you, and I will make you famous like the great ones of the earth. I will fix a place for my people Israel. I will plant them so they may dwell in their place without further disturbance. Neither shall the wicked continue to afflict them as they did of old, since the time I first appointed judges over my people Israel. I will give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord also reveals to you that he will establish a house for you. And when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your heir after you, sprung from your loins, and I will make his kingdom firm. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response? Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. The favors of the Lord I will sing forever. Through all generations my mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness. For you have said, My kindness is established forever. In heaven you have confirmed your faithfulness. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David my servant. Forever I will confirm your posterity and establish your throne for all generations. He shall say of me, You are my Father, my God, the Rock, my Savior. Forever I will maintain my kindness toward him and my covenant with him stands firm. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Zechariah, his father, filled with the Holy Spirit, prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, for he has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born in the house of the servant David. Through his prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemy, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from our high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. The Gospel of the Lord. Today's gospel contains the what's called the Benedictus, using the first line, blessed be the Lord. Um, this is this canonical of Zechariah, and in it, it contains all sorts of praise for God for what he has done and for the fulfillment of his promises. Um, but there's something that I think is really remarkable about this, if you remember the history behind this, that um, the, when Zechariah first saw the archangel Gabriel, he doubted, and he was struck dumb and so unable to speak for nine months during this entire period of time, until then finally, at the birth of John the Baptist, when the, the name John was given to him, suddenly his tongue was loosed, and we hear this great canticle of praise. But the thing is, where did Zechariah get all this? If you go back to the very beginning of Luke 1 and listen to what the Archangel Gabriel actually told Zechariah, he really didn't tell him very much. Um, he mentioned that he would be uh, this child to be born, would not drink wine or strong drink, he would, which is one of the ways of referring to what they call the Nazarite vow, meaning he would be consecrated, um, that he would not engage in such things. And this would be a reminder of someone else in the Old Testament, Zechariah would have known this very well, the judge Samson. Samson was someone who a razor would not touch his head, and he would not drink wine or strong drink. So immediately he'd think of Samson. Okay, that one, that was given to him by the archangel. And then in addition to that, um, the archangel also talked about the uh, way in which this child to be born would also be given, would come in the spirit and power of Elijah. You might remember Elijah was the one taken up in the flaming chariot, and the, the story was the tradition that Elijah would come again to prepare the way, uh, to prepare the way for the Lord. And that was all Zechariah was really told. He says this is going to be someone who's going to be like Samson, someone who's going to be like Elijah. But here, in this canticle that we hear today, now when Zechariah is able to speak, he now starts talking about not just what John would be, John the Baptist, he would be the one to prepare the way for the Most High, but he starts talking about the Messiah for whom John would prepare the way, and he starts talking about other things. The promises that were made to the prophets, the oath that was sworn to Abraham, that he would in fact fulfill the promises that were made in the house of David. This would be someone from the house of David. Where did he get all this? Where did this insight come from? Not from the archangel Gabriel, because Gabriel didn't say anything about that. So this is something that we might say is the fruit of Zechariah's own contemplation. And I think that's an important thing. And not just simply that the Lord would send a Messiah who would free us from our enemies round about us. That's what they would have expected in Old Testament times. But this is someone who would save us from our sins. Someone who would help us to be holy and righteous in God's sight all the days of our life. That in fact the proclamation of salvation through the forgiveness of sins is what we would receive. And the promise of peace that we, uh, we who dwell in the shadow of death 
uh, that we would be guided into the way of peace. That this dawn from on high, the sun coming down but rising up from the earth, this dawn from on high would come upon us, a little sign of the incarnation that is there. There's great insight here, and I think this is not to be neglected, because I think one of the truths that this demonstrates to us is that we can all grow in our understanding of our, our spiritual insight, our, our understanding of the way that the Lord works. If we go back in time and we think, how much did we know about the Lord? You know, hopefully we know the Lord better now than we did in the past. Um, we recently had a, a dinner in which Bishop Tilka, the vocation director, invited different, uh, different young men throughout the diocese. And one of the things that was interesting was to hear some different people talk about their stories, including Bishop Tilka. Bishop Tilka talked about growing up and not wanting to be a priest and his journey to not only discover his priesthood, but then how the Lord guided him. And that's kind of a reminder that even our bishop grows in his knowledge, not only of the faith, but his knowledge of his own vocation. Um, I know that for myself, I sometimes, after being a priest for a long time, it's hard to ever imagine that I wasn't a priest. It's, you say that you're a priest in the order of Melchizedek, a priest forever. And so I kind of sometimes have that, that idea in my head, like, okay, well, priesthood has always been there. But when I look back, I said, no, there was a time before I was a priest and a time in which I was discerning that. And if you, if you were to ask me as I reflect on that, my understanding even of the priesthood is different now than it was on the day that I was first ordained. So just as Zechariah go, grows in wisdom, as he grows in spiritual insight, so, so can I and so can you, all of us, can in fact appreciate these gifts more and more. So let this gift of the Holy Spirit come upon us. Let us immerse ourselves more deeply in these mysteries. So we've celebrated Christmas before, but let us do so though with a fresh sense of dedication, a fresh sense of awe and wonder at the coming of our Savior, and with ever deepening insight into the depth and the strength and the profound nature of the love of Jesus Christ for us, who is born for us. Let us stand to present our prayers and petitions. We pray for the Holy Catholic Church and the holy people of God, that we might be ready to humble ourselves before our Savior who comes to us in lowly form. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. We pray that the Lord might give us deeper insight and we might appreciate all the gifts that the Lord has given to us. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood and consecrated life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, for the sick, the suffering, for all of those in need of God's healing grace, we pray to the Lord. Lord for safety and travel and for blessings uh, upon all who are visiting with loved ones during these holidays, we pray to the Lord. Lord for all the faithful departed, especially the deceased members of the Moon family for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord Let us pray for the protection of our religious liberties as together we say, Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who roam throughout the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Almighty and merciful God, hear and answer these prayers that we make in faith. For we ask them through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Graciously make your own, O Lord, the offerings which we bring, that partaking of them we be cleansed of our sins and merit to stand ready with pure hearts for the coming in glory of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him. The Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Daniel, our Bishop, and Louis, his assistant bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant to us who find new vigor, O Lord, that these your wondrous gifts, in these your wondrous gifts, that as we prepare to celebrate in adoration the festivities of your son's nativity, so we may possess in gladness his everlasting rewards, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And finishing this Advent season in the company of the Blessed Mother, let us pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.